Well, I'm with Herb Good, and Herb is known for catching salmon from here to Alaska. But if you've ever been to one of the big sports shows, whether it's in Washington or Oregon, you've probably seen Herb Good in the program, and he does cooking demonstrations at all of these big shows, and it is so entertaining and informative. If you ever get to one of those shows, you'll want to catch Herb in his cooking demonstration. Now, I'm in Hood River right at Herb's home, and we were out on Drano Lake a couple of days ago, and we got a nice spring salmon, and Herb is going to demonstrate now his techniques for flaying fish. And it's probably different than the way I do it, Herb. Yeah. I throw them on a board and start hacking away. We're gonna show you a real quick, easy way of doing it. That is terrific. So I'm gonna step behind the camera. Herb is gonna show us how he fillets a salmon. And, and pay attention, folks, because this will save you a lot of time and trouble, and the end result is gonna be great. I also wanted to mention really quick that the preparation of a fish starts in the boat. And one of the things that Herb did, as soon as that fish got in the fish box, you bled it, it and made sure that that fish is gonna be in the best possible condition when you get it home, get it ready to prepare. So we're gonna see his tricks on uh, flaying a fish. All right, Herb's got a nice little setup right here on his deck. And he's going to show you all the finer points of flaying a nice spring salmon. Well, I think there's like several items you need to have in filleting. You need to have something that keeps the fish in place. And that's going to be a piece of rubber belting. If you ever find any of this, get your piece. It'll last you forever. You can roll it up, put it in a bucket of water, put a little Clorox in there, sanitize it. It's the nicest thing. Your knife doesn't dull on it, and the fish doesn't move around. And I put a 2 by 12 underneath it so it gets me up off the table. Then the next thing you need is a knife. Now we're told this is a fillet knife, and that's what they usually are, but hopefully when you go out fishing, you'll catch a big fish, and that knife doesn't work that well for me. So I want to get a bigger knife. And a big stiff knife like this is what I prefer. I'm going to show you how easy it works. You also have a little knife, I call this a fisherman's knife. It's a serrated edge knife, and I do all the gutting with this, taking out the gills, and then I'll cut the head off with it because that is a serrated edge. All right, so need to have a sharp knife. I always get mine sharp before I started. I use this work sharp, pretty neat. You can't screw this up. The only thing you want to remember is you pull it through the same number of times on each side. I usually start off with five times on each side. I did two because I'd already sharpened the knife before. Now you notice this has a rounded point. My all time favorite knife was this one, but it's, it's also dangerous. If there's two or three of you cleaning, you'll poke the other guy. So this is the knife the guy should use. All right, we're gonna roll him over here. We're gonna take off some fins. We'll take off the dorsal fin. I got help from the dog here. Jiggy, leave it alone. <laughs> we'll take off the anal fin. Then we're gonna roll him over. And I'm gonna cut the head off. You could leave the head on and cut it off this way if you're really in a hurry. But I wanna cut the head off so you can see exactly where you wanna place the knife. So using that little serrated edge, you see how easy that cut through there? I just cut the head off and now you can see the backbone yeah and I'm gonna lay the knife right on the backbone and I'm gonna start too don't let the knife do the work it's gonna ride right down the backbone so you just let it keep going you get right to here here's the mistake everybody makes they want to move their hand now you can move it but you can't move it in front of the knife move it right behind the knife finish it right to the tail and there in one nice slicing motion you have a nice clean fillet isn't that beautiful beautiful Oh. So you don't have all that hacking. Now we'll set that over here. I'll take the rib bones off in a minute. Now when I roll it over to do the other side, if I didn't have the board, I'd be down on the table. It'd be hard for me to get at. So now I'm still up so I can get at it. Lay the knife right on that backbone. Start going through. Same way. Put your hand behind the blade. Cut it off. And there's my second Another beautiful, beautiful fillet. fillet. Now I don't throw this away. This to me is as good as anything. I take, put it in my brine if I'm smoking. If I'm going to do some canning, I fillet it off of there, the meat, put it in the jars. Don't waste anything on spring salmon. Sure. All right, now we're going to take and get the rib bones off of this. I'm going to take this belly fin off of here. I'm just going to take my little knife again. Take that one off. And on one side or the other, you're going to have this cartilage, and that's from the dorsal fin. And it happens to be on this side. So we'll 
take that off. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to take the collar off. And on spring salmon, I put the collar in the brine also with the backbone and smoke it. There's a lot of good oh, meat right yes. here. Real oily, good meat. Now I'm going to switch over here a little bit because I'm left-handed. Lay your knife underneath the rib bones like so. Don't go all the way to the end and angle it right up against the bones and draw it through there. So you're just going to have bone, very little meat on there. I always leave five or six of them because there's two bones that grow crooked right up here. It's hard to get your knife through. I go through with a little knife, take those off. Now I have a fillet and I'm going to take off the cartilage off of this one. We won't have it on the other side. So I'm going to just take the knife and put it right underneath it. Don't waste any of this now. It's too precious. And I take the back fins right off like so. So I've got all the bones out of him except for the 28 pin bones that come right down here to the anal exit. This is the last one. Yep. So now I've got a perfect fillet and it's not all gouged up. Really quick and easy. You already know Mike's Meat and Farmer's Market for their local fruits and vegetables, but where's the beef? <laughs> it's here now. Farm fresh, born in the USA, no added hormones, natural beef, just like Grandpa used to raise. Beef, pork, and free-range chicken, fresh from the farm to your table. You can feed your family with confidence, knowing that you're serving all naturally raised fruits, vegetables, and now meat, fresh from the farm. Mike's Meat and Farmer's Market on North Wenatchee Avenue, next to the Buzz Inn. Hi, you are not going to believe this. I bought Pepsi Next. What's Pepsi Next? It's the new cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste. 60% less sugar? Mmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Let me get the camera. I've never had anything like it. Okay. My parents are going to fly. Yeah, they're going to be so proud. Introducing Pepsi Next. Drink it to believe it. Are you getting this, honey? It's going viral. Amerigas is the nation's largest supplier of propane and propane equipment. With over 650 locations all across the country, you can sleep easy knowing Amerigas is right there to serve you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Are you building or buying a home? Ask your builder to make it propane. Make it Amerigas. Learn more about the outstanding fixed pricing and affordable budget payment programs offered by Amerigas. Log on to Amerigas.com. Amerigas, America's propane company, has a shopping list of all the things their product propane can do commercial business use home heating water heating pool and spa heating clothes drying fuel for kitchen stoves and of course grilling propane is extremely affordable clean burning and extremely efficient for a location near you check your local yellow pages or visit us at amerigas.com enjoy benefits such as automatic delivery flexible payment options and customer referral awards amerigas america's propane company reliable safe and responsive Now, depending on how you're going to fix this, if you're going to smoke some of it, I cut my fish different than most. I'll take the belly off because that's the same thickness. Then I'll make two slices down here like so, and I'll have the pieces long and about this thick, and I cut them in half, and I smoke them in chunks like that. They're little square. Oh, sure. Okay. And that way you get, you get a nice glaze on all three sides. It makes it really nifty. So... Okay. There's a pretty play now, the same way at the other side. We're going to just take and bring it over here. I'm going to switch around on this side. And we're going to take off that belly fin. This one right here. We're going to get that off of there. You can actually take these off uh, before you, as you're gutting, if you want to. But mm -hmm. we don't do it here. We always leave on. And you want to remember one thing nowadays with all this clip fin thing. You want to be careful filleting fish on the water. They don't like that too well. You could get a ticket for that. That's a good point. You're yeah. supposed to have the fish on your way home before you take off any of that, those fins, because they want to know if it's a clipped abacus. Right. So don't, uh, you know, I, I just get don't. get in a hurry. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't get in a hurry. I do my filleting at home. That way I don't get in any trouble with it. Same way here, just take those rib bones right off, just like we did on the other side. And I'm going to take the five bones on the left there, off like so, and there again I've got a beautiful fillet, not all gouged up. Isn't that pretty? Oh man, that is gorgeous. That's Makes me hungry just to look at. Good eating, yeah. Yeah. 
You want me to show you how I strip that? Are you going to smoke or are you going to eat this fresh? This particular fish, I'm going to eat fresh, but... Uh, well, I'm going to show you about what I said about the belly anyway, just so, because even fixing it fresh, I take these belly flaps off right there. That's the finest of there all of you the go. smoke. Okay. Then I've got this section here that I could, I could barbecue, I could do anything with it I want, but it's the same thickness, so it's going to cook at the same time whenever you're cooking it. If you leave this on there, it's a little thin, and it'll get done too soon. Gotcha. So I always take the belly off, and then you've got the rest of this that you can... Uh, Cooking. That is ready to go, ready to go into the oven or the smoker as or you demonstrated smoker. either way. Whichever way you want to do it, yeah. That's terrific Herb, that is very helpful. Now we ought to do one little piece here on the barbecue and I want to show the people how easy it is to skin a salmon. Uh, you can skin it from the tail first, I always start in the middle. Put your knife down against the skin, you turn your knife. I'm going to pull with my left hand and seesaw with my right hand, just like this. And I'm just going to go right through there. I'm going to have the salmon and the skin. You don't have a bunch of meat left on it. Perfect. Now, if you're smoking, you leave the skin on there. Yeah. If you're going to do different barbecues, a lot of times I take the skin off. You don't want to mess with it. Filleting's pretty easy. Get you a good stiff knife, a board, piece of belding, so you can chase the fish down. It's easy. That's great. All right. You are not gonna believe this. I bought Pepsi Next. What's Pepsi Next? It's the new cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste. 60% less sugar? Mmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Let me get a camera. <laughs> I've never had anything like it. Oh, my parents are gonna fly. Yeah, they're gonna be so proud. Introducing Pepsi Next. Next. Drink it to believe it. Are you getting this, honey? It's going viral. Amerigas is the nation's largest supplier of propane and propane equipment. With over 650 locations all across the country, you can sleep easy knowing Amerigas is right there to serve you. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Are you building or buying a home? Ask your builder to make it propane. Make it Amerigas. Learn more about the outstanding fixed pricing and affordable budget payment programs offered by Amerigas. Log on to Amerigas.com. Amerigas, America's propane company, has a shopping list of all the things their product propane can do commercial business use home heating water heating pool and spa heating clothes drying fuel for kitchen stoves and of course grilling propane is extremely affordable clean burning and extremely efficient for a location near you check your local yellow pages or visit us at amerigas.com enjoy benefits such as automatic delivery flexible payment options and customer referral awards amerigas america's propane company reliable safe and responsive you already know Mike's Meat and Farmer's Market for their local fruits and vegetables, but where's the beef? <laughs> it's here now. Farm fresh, born in the USA, no added hormones, natural beef, just like Grandpa used to raise. Beef, pork, and free-range chicken fresh from the farm to your table. You can feed your family with confidence knowing that you're serving all naturally raised fruits, vegetables, and now meat fresh from the farm. Mike's Meat and Farmer's Market on North Wenatchee Avenue next to the Buzz Inn. All right, we're going to fix a barbecued fish, and this is, I get asked all the time at sports shows, what do I do with my leftover fish at the end of the year? Everybody's cleaning out their freezers right now. And this really works good for that because it'll never be a dried fish, it's nice and moist. We're going to do a piece of our spring chinook that uh, we caught yesterday, and I like to do it a different way. We're going to show you that a little later, but um, we're just going to use this as an example. So I've skinned it, filleted it, taken the bones out of it, and skinned it. Then I'm going to take a piece of aluminum foil, and I take the nice thick, you can do this in your oven, you can do it on your barbecue, whatever you want. We're going to lay that down. Then we're going to take a little bit of margarine. We're going to put a layer of margarine down here. That'd just be like you put a little bit of oil in your frying pan. Then we're going to take our nice fillet, and we're going to stick that right there on that. Now, you could season this fish, but we're going to season the dressing we're going to put on it. And the dressing I'm going to put on this is really simple. We're going to take equal portions of cream of mushroom soup. You don't have to measure this. I'm going to use a half a can of cream of mushroom soup. And I'm going to use some sour cream. Same amount of sour cream. So I'm doing about four or five ounces. That, that's enough to do this fish. To that I'm going to add some chopped up onions. 
Now you could also put some more mushrooms in there. Lots of times I'll put extra mushrooms. If you don't like onions, you wouldn't have to put them in there, but it gives it a real nice flavor. So all I've got is cream of mushroom soup, sour cream, chopped up onions. Now I need to season it. And if you don't like a lot of seasonings, you can use just salt and pepper. That's the two best seasonings. I have a seasoning salt here that I like to use, and it's got some paprika and a couple other things in there. Now, be a little generous with this. You can see I put quite a little bit in there because it, uh, you're not going to get it too strong. You're not going to get over seasoned it, and you, and you can taste it. If you need a little more, you can add a little more seasoning, but you could use just salt and pepper, like I said. Now, if this was a piece of fish that I had left over in the freezer and you had a little bit of freezer burn on it, you cut those pieces off, and then we're going to put this dressing on the fish. So we're going to put a nice generous portion all over the fish like so. Now this is when this is going to get really good. This is, I call this my seafood delight. So I've got a nice generous, so having this mixture on there, it'll never dry out. It'll be just nice and moist. Then I'm going to add some imitation crab. Now you can use real cr crab if you've got real crab, like if you had Dungeness crab. We're going to put imitation crab on here. We're on a budget today. So we're going to put a few, a few pieces of this. Then to that, I'm going to add some bay shrimp. So we'll put a little bit of bay shrimp on there. Now you look at all the flavors you're going to have there with the shrimp, the imitation crab. Then, now we want to bind this all together, so we're going to take some cheese. You can use any cheese you want. Just cheddar cheese. This is a, one of those blends. It's got some mozzarella, some Monterey Jack, some cheddar. I put a nice generous portion of cheese on it. Then to the top of that, I want to add some dill. Dill and salmon really work good together. And don't uh, don't skimp on it. I put a nice layer right down the top, just like so. You're going to smell that dill. When you start smelling that dill, you're going to know it's close to being done. Then you want to take it. Roll this all up in the aluminum foil, like so. And you want to have your oven or your barbecue at about 350 degrees. And you just slide it in. Now, if I do this in the oven, I put a catch pan underneath it. If I do it on the barbecue, I just set it on the barbecue. Now, at 350 degrees in about 35 to 45 minutes, this is going to be done. But you'll smell it. When you start smelling it, you'll know it's close to done. But you almost can't overcook it because you have all that moisture in there. So, that's a great way of doing salmon, especially if you had something left over in the freezer. Amerigas is the nation's largest supplier of propane and propane equipment. With over 650 locations all across the country, you can sleep easy knowing Amerigas is right there to serve you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Are you building or buying a home? Ask your builder to make it propane. Make it Amerigas. Learn more about the outstanding fixed pricing and affordable budget payment programs offered by Amerigas. Log on to Amerigas.com. Amerigas, America's propane company, has a shopping list of all the things their product propane can do. Commercial business use, home heating, water heating, pool and spa heating, clothes drying, fuel for kitchen stoves, and of course, grilling. Propane is extremely affordable, clean burning, and extremely efficient. For a location near you, check your local yellow pages or visit us at Amerigas.com. Enjoy benefits such as automatic delivery, flexible payment options, and customer referral awards. Amerigas, America's propane company. Reliable, safe, and responsive. You already know Mike's Meat and Farmer's Market for their local fruits and vegetables, but where's the beef? <laughs> it's here now. Farm fresh, born in the USA, no added hormones, natural beef, just like Grandpa used to raise. Beef, pork, and free-range chicken, fresh from the farm to your table. You can feed your family with confidence, knowing that you're serving all naturally raised fruits, vegetables, and now meat, fresh from the farm. Mike's Meat and Farmer's Market on North Wenatchee Avenue, next to the Buzz Inn. Hi! You are not gonna believe this. I bought Pepsi Next. What's Pepsi Next? It's the new cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste. 60% less sugar? Mmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Look at the camera. <laughs> I've never had anything like it. <laughs> my parents are gonna Yeah, fly. they're gonna be so proud. Introducing Pepsi Next. Drink it to believe it. Are you getting this, honey? It's going viral. All right, we're going to do our spring chinook that we caught. This is my favorite way of doing it. We do it this way all the time. I've got the filet. I've taken most of the bones out of it. I'm going to slice off these little 
I call them uh, steaks, but you can see they're just about three quarters, about three eighths of an inch thick. And I take the skin off. You can, if you want to leave the skin on, you can, but I just take them off like so. Now I start doing it this way because when my kids were small, I wanted to, they wanted salmon and I used to cut them in steaks, but you had all that bone in there and I was always worried about them getting a bone. So we do it that way. Now I'll show you a little trick here that's pretty neat. If you wanted to do one that looked like a steak, you cut it like so, cut the chunk, you turn it over. You have to have a serrated edge to cut through the skin or else have a really a sharp knife. And you cut through the skin halfway down the fish like so. I'm having trouble going through there. I don't have a sharp knife there. Which cut right down through the skin halfway through and then you turn it over like this and you have a steak without the bone in there. That's pretty neat also. And if you cook it on your barbecue it looks like just a regular steak. So now we've got our four pieces here that we're going to fix. All I'm going to put on this is some salt and some pepper. I want to do it on both sides. And you want to have these pieces, like I said, just a little less than a half inch thick so that they'll cook. I want them nice and brown on the outside but done on the inside. And then we're going to come over here to our pan. And I have a cast iron skillet. Here's the secret. Don't use a lot of oil. I'm going to use just a little bit of canola oil, about a tablespoon. All I want to do is just have the pan wet so it has something to fry. Then I'm going to put my little steaks in there and I'm going to brown them. It'll probably take a minute on each side then that's going to be so good. And then I just slice up lemon, put a little bit of lemon on top of it. That's the way you want to eat spring chinook. It's absolutely the best. So just slice it about three eighths of an inch thick, a little thicker. Put a little salt and pepper on it and fry it. And you can see it, it starts to turn pink around the edges. It doesn't take long. And then you're going to turn it over to the other side. And then another minute or two on the other side, then you can take and serve it. And you're talking about the best possible lunch I could imagine. Yeah, we're going to have fish and salad. Now that's the perfect lunch. Healthy? When you tell me looking at me, I like healthy stuff. <laughs> I like everything. i tell you what. But this is going to be good. This is a special treat, and I can't wait to try fresh spring salmon. Just skillet fried. And you can see how it's getting pink around the edge. Ah. That tells you that it's just about ready to turn. I'm rushing it, but see that nice little golden brown on the top? It could, uh. it could go just a little longer. Whenever you take it off the stove, you should break it open. It should just be translucent in the middle. It should be pink all the way around the other side. And we're rushing it a little bit here for the camera, but it'll be fine. Before I tell you, you can fry up a bunch of this in a hurry, and everybody will just, they won't believe how good it is. So spring it up. Slice it thin, salt and pepper, fry it in just a little bit of canola oil at a high temperature, real quick like. Well, just the aroma has got can me you, convinced. Can you smell that? It's it? the best way to have. It's going to be awesome. Then we're going to take a little bit of lemon, slice it up, put a little lemon on it with our top green salad. It's going to be awesome. Fabulous. Thanks so much, Herb. You're That's welcome. That's going to be a fabulous meal.